Cool. Yeah, we'll give it 10 more seconds in case others are going to join. I guess Vinny and Robert are not going to be able to join, but uh, and yeah, there's an agenda for the call. All right, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's get started. So welcome to the April uh, core team meeting call. So we might have one more person joining. Hi, Remy, how are you? Good morning. Hi, Good, All morning. Right. Good morning. All right, so yeah, we're just getting started uh, with the agenda and it looks like Jacopo is joining too. Hello, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Hi, Jacopo. Thanks for joining. So yeah, we're a good crowd today. So we have a couple of people that can't uh, join, but I think we have a good quorum here. So uh, just several things on the agenda. Uh, uh, starting like sometime last month, I started sending out a survey for first time contributors when I was uh, thanking them for their first MRs and sending them, sending them their gift. Uh, so the response rate has been uh, been great. I mean, you probably, if you, in case you've seen the slides, there are already 30 people who responded to the survey, which is great. Uh, so usually, like a survey, the response rate's like uh, really hard to predict and uh, hard to get a good number. But I was pleasantly surprised. So we'll go through uh, some of the data that, uh, well, well, we'll go through the data that that we've gotten so far. And um, you've probably seen the Twitter posts or message on Gitter about contribute for prize. We'll have a brief discussion on that. And speaking of Gitter, there's there was an issue uh, I think George that you opened about rename, renaming the channel because there's a confusion about mm -hmm. uh, the purpose of the channel. I think, uh, which is a good point. Uh, we'll talk uh, briefly about contribute, which is coming up in about four to five weeks, I guess. I mean, I, I think. Uh, some of you won't be able to join, but we'll have a brief discussion on that. And uh, as we talked about in uh, on the Slack channel, um, there's uh, the schedule for the future core team meetings. Uh, anything else uh, that we're missing here on the agenda or just keep going? Okay, so uh, the survey results, and I'm glad, like um, Vinny, who's not here today, he I think the, he sort of seeded that idea, uh, and we have like created a short survey about eight questions, and you should be able to see this uh, see the survey results in this link. Uh, if you're not able to, please let me know. I thought I created a publicly viewable survey result, uh, so let me know if you're not able to see it, but you should see something like this. It's, it should be the same link. Um, so for the first several questions, these were you know multiple choice type of questions. Uh, you had a couple of options on, on things like, you know, how long did it take you to set up the GDK? Uh, and were you happy with the response time, so on and so forth. And the other half were more qualitative questions about what were some of the challenges when you first made your contribution. Uh, so I'll quickly go through these. Um, the question of the GDK, um, I mean, I sort of expected this because, I mean, a lot of people, some of the contributions were more documentation related. For, for that, obviously, you don't need a, uh, need a GDK. So about half the people said they didn't actually have to deal with GDK is what they've said. And the other half who work with the GDK, um, surprisingly, the amount of time it took them to get them going was uh, was was lower than I, I thought it would be, so which is good. Uh, so people were able to figure things out in, in a couple of hours to, to get things going. Um, so that's um, uh, the question on GDK. The next one is, I mean, were you, you know, pretty happy with the response time from the GitLab team members and vast majority of them, I'm happy to see that they said no, I, I, they said yes. Uh, so I think it looks like only two people said they weren't happy with the response time. Um, reading some of the subsequent question, it looks like, I don't think this was like the initial response time, but I think some of the MRs for one reason or another took a while to, to get them merged. Uh, so I think that was their concern. I think at least the first time response, I hope, was was reasonable enough for, for everybody. But 
regardless, I think uh, I'm pretty positive uh, in terms of uh, happiness with response time. And in three was on on the feedback from from reviewers, and uh, I mean, I, none of them said they were not happy with the the feedback they got from the GitLab team members or or other people that were participating participating in the review or discussions, which is good. Um, so so far so good. Um, and the other question was, you know, did you were you able to get the help that you needed in case you needed them? And again, the vast majority of people said, yeah, they were able to get help. And and the the other responses, seven of them was said, I mean, they actually didn't need need any help at all in terms of their MRs. Um, so again, um, pretty positive, uh, which is good. And so the rest of the survey, with the exception of the last one, I mean, the last question basically asked, like, would you contribute again? And, and uh, you know, fortunately, everybody said, yes, they would, they would definitely be interested in coming back and contributing more, which is what we want to see. Uh, so the questions, uh, like next several questions, like why you decided to contribute. So these were, I mean, text. So I, I kind of summarized it in the slides. Uh, difficult part of contributing. I try to put them into different categories um, and su improvement. I mean, suggestions for improvement uh, to help the contribute contribution process. So these were uh, uh, more like a descriptive answers, not multiple choice. I try to summarize them in the slides and in the last question uh, I mentioned already. Uh, so I'll go back to the slide here. Um, uh, reasons for wanting to con contribute. I mean, I, I saw broadly three reasons. Uh, I, I mean, the first one, I think uh, this is similar to what, what a lot of you I mean, started contributing. Like you guys have been users of GitLab and, and found things that needed fixing, whether it's just documentation or some of the features that didn't, uh, people didn't like. Uh, so that was pretty common answer from several people and somewhat related to that were I mean, they were they've been a big fan of GitLab, so wanted to find ways to contribute, which is a, which is a good thing. Uh, and a few people said they actually had a feature they uh, they wanted to add a feature to support their needs, a specific use case uh, or a specific needs they wanted to address. And uh, one way to do that was to you know directly contribute. So there, I think there were a couple of people who mentioned that as a reason. Um, so I don't think there were a whole lot of surprises there, um, but I mean, feel free to go through. I, mean, I I don't think there are like 30 answers necessarily. I mean, some of the people skip uh, some of these more qualitative questions, um, but I mean, these are the sort of the broad themes that I saw in terms of why people wanted to contribute. So I don't think there were any surprises there. Um, but let me just quickly pause here and see if you have any thoughts or or questions. I, I'm not sure if you had a chance to go through the answers that people provided, but um, but yeah, I definitely didn't see any any surprises here. I have a question here. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, unrelated, but I don't <laughs> have permissions to the Sorry Monkey page. I don't. Yeah. Okay. How can okay. I open the page? And okay. Is that true for others as well, or? Uh, I opened that link, yeah. which is on the screen right now, and I got, you do not have permission to see this page. Okay. Open fun for me. Same here. Okay. Hmm. That's odd. So, I wonder if this is like blocked in, because I know like in some countries, like, um, I, I think it was China that Survey Monkey may have been blocked at some point, so I don't know if that's the case here with you, Vitali. But um, I can save the file and send it to you if that helps. So uh, I'll just try to use VPN, something like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. But cool. Okay, uh, any other questions? comments or questions on that specific question or uh, if not I'll I guess I'll just move on and the most difficult part of contributing as a first-time contributor uh, I mean some of these weren't that surprising like if finding finding an issue to work on I mean that's sort of the common 
uh, feedback I gotten uh, from people. Um, and so the setting up the GDK, I mean, this was brought up by like a several people, which was, um, I, I assume this, these, these came from people that took, it took more than just a couple of hours to set up the GDK. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I, gone through this like personally based on my experience and I just found out that something's wrong with my GDK that I, I didn't know about so I was trying to fix it so some of that could be like a similar experience that people have been having so um, uh, something that I need to talk to GDK team about but I'm sure like a documentation and others are some of the areas that we can improve and I think there's there were some questions that were posted on Gitter over the past couple of weeks as well uh, some people uh, some one individual I think was having uh, difficulty getting things going with the GDK uh, so that definitely is is concerning um, and I mean the third one I don't think it's that surprising because I think this is what I mean, pe people go through as, as you work with like a new tool or new new community. Uh, so the work processes and tools and and et cetera are are not familiar. So that's something we need to get used to. But uh, those were uh, some of the feedback on difficult uh, what you know the most difficult part of contributing. Um, I'll pause here here as well to see if you. Any of you have any feedback? Uh, I'm not sure if you have any thoughts on on the GDK issue on on how to make that easier. But so uh, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So um, I guess I've you know this is Ben. I've done a lot of contributing on the documentation side and like probably only a little bit really on the the GitLab side. Right. So like one of the issues that I personally have ran into with the GDK is like, I'll spend more time setting up the GDK than it does. That takes me to actually do what I'm trying to do, you know, test, uh -huh. trying to test that I changed in GitLab. Right. Um, I mean, especially if it, if it has to do with like basic UI type things. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's just an observation. Like it, it would be nice if there was a less than, you know, two hour option to, to get set up and test something. Okay. So basically it takes more time to set it up versus like the time it takes to actually use it uh, for testing or, or anything else that you need to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're, if you're going to set it up and you're going to use it a ton, then it's certainly useful. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a one-time contributor and you're trying to fix like a, I, I don't know, some basic problem, some basic typo, something, you mm -hmm. know, actually want to test it in like real code as opposed to make the merge request and hope they changed it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes quite a bit of time to get it set up. So right. I don't know if we have the setup right now or not, but I would think that there should be some way to have like some sort of review app type version of GitLab that people could play with. Okay. So yeah, that's an interesting idea. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we yeah. do have review apps, yeah, uh, but yeah, they're, they're not available for Fox uh, right now, so that's something that, uh, that ideally we should be able to do, but um, for security reasons, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit hard. Right. Okay. Yeah, and then I don't know if this is like a common issue with other people. Like, I mean, once you install the GDK, like I wish there was like a quick way to test it and make sure that it, it actually works. Uh, I'm not sure if there's an easy trick of, for, for doing that. Like once it's installed, like how, how do you, I mean, I'm not sure if there's a way to like run some kind of a script to make sure that everything's set up correctly. Uh, it feels like you discover something when you actually try to use it, like a later on. Um, but I don't know if that's just my personal experience or others have heard or experienced a similar thing. But yeah, I think that's mostly how you find issues with your GDKs by using it. Um, right. Right. I. I. I I think I installed the DGK, uh, maybe n not only once, but a few times. 
uh, in the three years that I'm, I'm, I'm here at GitLab. And um, I don't usually have issues. Um, so uh, maybe it's luck. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, Please create issues if you have uh, problems, so that we can, uh, so that we know what are the issues at least, mm -hmm. and we can uh, address them or document them. Uh, I know that there's a there's quite a there's a tr troubleshooting uh, documentation in the GDK uh, project mm -hmm. where there are a bunch of uh, like random issues that can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would definitely re recommend to check that out. Um, but yeah, otherwise, just create issues. I uh, would say. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Remy. I mean, actually, this is something I wanted to do. Like when I'm with, uh, I'm a contributor face to face with some people. I wanted some people to take a look at my installation and see if everything's actually working. But uh, I might corner one of you guys during during the breaks and and see if we can figure it out. But yeah, so that that was sort of the uh, feedback on that question. And and Ben, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, and let's see, let me move on here. And suggestions for improvement. Um, uh, so I mean, first one I I've, I've heard this in the early days, and um, not surprisingly, this is still an issue. Make it easier to find who the reviewers and maintainers are. Uh, I mean, basically, I mean, I try to triage new MRs and and sort of copy the like, for example, product managers or engineering managers. So, community managers know that it's it's okay to like ping those people if they're not responsive. But I think it's um, I think we've done some documentation in our handbook of reviewers and maintainers, so we probably it's probably worth taking a, taking a look at. Um, and on the second one, uh, so this came up in, in, I think even, even in the previous question, um, uh, people wanted a better, like a documentation of the GitLab code base. Uh, so this is something I wanted to ask, uh, all of you about, like, I wasn't sure how to like address this. Like, is this, um, uh, I mean, I would assume, I mean, most of our code is, I, I guess, in Ruby. I, I thought like in Ruby, the way things are structured was like pretty standard, but I'm not sure if that's what, what the concerns are from, from the respondents or like if you have any thoughts on, on that issue. But. Yeah, I'd also like to have better documentation about GitLab code base, <laughs> but in the, Ideal world, uh, the code itself should uh, should describe itself what it's doing. But since mm -hmm. we're not in the ideal world, we I think have to be, have to have um, uh, comments in in uh, source code, and that's one of the reasons I faced when I uh, firstly opened opened the source code and. I mostly didn't understand what what was going on there, especially right. in uh, Banzai <coughs> in Banzai model when uh, it's not it's not easy to understand what's going on there. And as far as I know, uh, some employers of GitLab still don't understand how it's how it works now. So okay. I think it would be very great to have some more documentation. Uh, inline documentation or some uh, separate pages describing uh, about how GitLab is built or GitLab mm -hmm. internals or something like that. Right. Yeah, and I think third one is somewhat related. I mean, this uh, applies specifically to documentation, but uh, uh, I mean, I've seen this discussion happen in issues and other forums where like, uh, they don't know how the, the creation of the documentation is actually done. So uh, that's something I could talk to the docs team about. Um, but I guess somewhat similar to how, like, it's hard to understand our code base. Um, any other thoughts or uh, comments or 
on the survey? Uh, one thing, but yeah. it's not strictly related to this, uh, is that uh, what I found out personally is that uh, contributing to GitHub CE is quite easy, but uh -huh. sometimes if you need to also uh, update other projects such, such as Gitali or uh, some related projects, it's not that easy because mm -hmm. uh, while the CE is well documented, the Gitali part is a bit harder to find what you need to do, what you need to tweak. Uh, but that's just my personal point of view, though. Might be okay. not too. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. That makes sense. I think one of the answers for this question was also to uh, use tools like uh, Code Crumbs. Oh, I put a link in the chat. Um, I think that's something that we could try at least just to visualize the uh, uh, code base a little bit. Mm -hmm. You say code crumbs, Hannes, or? Yeah. Okay. That was the one that was mentioned there, so. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I see. Cool. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, anyhow, like, uh, obviously, the the survey will keep going out. I mean, I'll, I might tweak the survey questions. I might make some of the questions like multiple choice after we get, uh, if I sense there's a critical mass of, of answers or certain options that are popular. But um, uh, I'll, you know, I'll probably, I mean, I mean, I'll, at least for the next several months, I'll keep sending out the survey to first time contributors. But I thought it was uh, interesting, like uh, looking at the data. I mean, I was happy that mostly people were happy. Uh, it's probably because they're getting a, uh, merchandise from GitLab, but uh, some of the suggestions for improvement I thought were pretty constructive. So, cool. And then, yeah, obviously, like we won't do this like every core team call, but uh, maybe in the next few months, uh, we'll re revisit the survey results when once we get uh, more responses. Oh. Cool. So, uh, if there are no questions, I'll just keep, uh, I'll move on. Um, so, contribute for prize. Uh, so, you probably remember at the last hackathon, we labeled uh, some of the issues as priority items uh, during hackathon, and we had extra prize for. Uh, people who worked on those um, issues and and have their have the merge requests uh, merged, uh, that was like pretty successful. I think we started started with like eight issues and like five of them were picked up. Uh, I mean, I think a couple of them ended up being more involved than than we anticipated. Uh, so at least one of them, I extended the de deadline. I mean, I allowed that person to spend more than ten days on completing it because it was uh, it got pretty complicated. Um, so what we, what I wanted to do was to, uh, you know, not wait until the next hackathon uh, for people to work on some of the priority issues, like, um, but work with the product managers of uh, uh, at GitLab to uh, to add a label, contribute for prize. So I mean, there's a sample query there on CE. Uh, I think there are about 20 or so issues that are labeled with that uh, new. Uh, contribute for prize label. Um, so we have a, uh, a GitLab Moleskine notebook for people that are uh, working on those issues. I'm, like the last time I checked, I don't think anybody was working on any of them, but uh, I need to broadcast this uh, a couple more times, I think, on Twitter and other channels. Um, but obviously, I encourage all the core team members um, to look at those issues and 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 work on um, those issues that uh, that grabs your interest. And I also updated my handbook uh, to uh, to add details on on contribute for prize. Um, uh, let me know if you have any questions. And again, I encourage you to um, start working on him. And I think. Uh, for each of the product teams, I think we set a limit up. Let's only have about four or five uh, of those issues at a time. Uh, we didn't want to create a long list of them, so there shouldn't be that many at, at, at any point. But uh, we'll, uh, uh, after a few months, we'll we'll change the GitLab merchandise so people aren't just winning the same thing, or getting the same merchandise over and over again. Hey, was that on the blog already? 
Uh, I'm sorry. Was that on the blog already? Uh, for no, I, I I just posted on the Twitter. Um, so, uh, and I'm not sure if you saw a new blog post that I'm working on. It's supposed to go out next week. I'll be mentioning there on the blog post. Um, so it should be going. So that blog post should be going out in the next couple of weeks. Um, but it did go out of the Twitter space and I know a lot of people, uh, I saw a lot of likes and retweets, so there, I know a number of people looked at him, but yeah, it'll, it'll be on the blog next couple of weeks. Cool. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, so the Gitter channel, uh, so that's the issue there. Let me click on that link. Uh, so I, George, thanks for starting this conversation. Um, I mean, there, there's still, I mean, this, this was an issue from the beginning, I think. Uh, so there, there are basically two main uh, Gitter channels, one for community and one for, I mean, basically GitLab HQ. Uh, I mean, GitLab HQ has a lot of traffic, but that's where you know, most of the support and using GitLab questions should go, but you do see uh, maybe a couple of times a week people posting those types of questions in the community channel. Uh, and I think there are a lot of proposals and discussions on what should we name this to. And I think we settled on uh, contributors. Um, so basically it'll be GitLab HQ uh, slash contributors and also update the description uh, let me see what the description right now is. It says chat about contributing to GitLab, but we can change the description to room for GitLab contributors. So it's a little bit more explicit on, on what the channel or the what the room is supposed to be. Uh, George, do you have anything else to add there? Um, but I think this is it more or less. Uh, it has con caused some confusion in the past, uh, yeah. especially after a small change where we changed the default room name for a gitter and mm -hmm. uh, I think this got even worse because people were directed uh, to the community channel uh, mm -hmm. uh, at first. I think contributors uh, sounds good uh, yeah. we can change that. Uh, I would only check with uh, Eric uh, if there is any usage of the GitLab HQ uh, channel just because before renaming, renaming that one. I'm not sure if you agree renaming uh, GitLab HQ also to the community the default uh, um, okay. Yeah. I mean, I think he has to do this anyways, right? Because I don't think I have the right to change the name, uh, for example. But yeah, that's a good point. But uh, yeah, before I do that, I mean, I, I want to make sure like other core team members were okay with moving forward with these changes. Mm -hmm. No objections. Let me get myself an action item to, oh, sorry, did somebody have a comment or question? Okay. All right, so looks like we have a consensus and I'll ping Eric uh, and so, so make sure there are no issues with making these changes. All right, yeah, thanks again, George, for starting that conversation. And we can move on. All right, so contribute. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, not all of you uh, will be able to, are, are gonna be joining us in, in New Orleans in about a month. Uh, and I mentioned this in the core team channel as well. So we scheduled the, so uh, something that uh, that's different this year versus, uh, uh, like a last year, I mean, basically every dinner, like you were like all together, you're eating at the same place. So, but uh, they change it up so that like on Sunday evening, like each group get, gets to have their own casual dinner uh, in a smaller setting. And then you get to pick your restaurant. Uh, and so, I mean, developer relationships team isn't large, uh, but so we wanted to invite uh, the core team members and we also have two other community members that are coming uh, to contribute. So all of you are obviously welcome. I mean, this is not mandatory. If you don't want to have dinner with us, we won't take it personally, but um, you're, you're invited. And uh, 
this, um, I, I forget the name of the restaurant, but it's going to be a local uh, Louis, Louisiana cuisine. So the restaurant looked really interesting. Uh, so it'll be fun. Uh, so that's Sunday evening. Uh, and then also want to make sure that you um, you probably got instructions and an email from Kirsten about signing up for workshops and UGC sessions. I mean, if you haven't done that, please uh, do that soon. Um, and for uh, so this is the last item is still uh, work in progress. I mean, there's a discussion about having a panel discussion featuring uh, some of the community members. Um, I mean, Hannes, I mean, you were on the panel last year with Robert and, and Takuya. Um, uh, but I mean, this year we might, uh, I might pick like a different core team members an as an example. And George, Ben, uh, I might uh, talk to you if we decide to sort of go this route. It's, um, I mean, don't worry too much. Like the, the panel seems like very formal, but it's going to be a casual conversation uh, on stage and I'll likely participate. But um, um, talking to my colleagues in the marketing team later this week on what the format's going to be, but we wanted to um, uh, highlight uh, community members and 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 contributors that are that are at the event. So that's uh, that's uh, being talked about. I'll share more details, and uh, if I want to invite some of the core team members to the panel, I'll definitely let you know. Um, it, we're not going to surprise you like we did last year with with our core team members. I think they found out like um, a day or two before, but uh, we'll give you ample heads up when that's if that's going to happen. Um, so that's uh, what's happening in Contribute. Uh, and the last item I had, I mean, so there are discussions on this about uh, the future team, uh, future core team meetings. It doesn't look like there are any issues like switching this to a day later uh, in the week. Uh, so basically in Europe and um, in like Asia Pacific region or the far east of Russia, the meetings right now are on, on, on Tuesdays, but we'll just move it to a day later on Wednesday because uh, Robert the, definitely seems like at least for the next several months he's got a conflict and it looks like it works for the rest of us uh, as well. So, um, uh, and uh, like we talked about last month, uh, we'll cancel the May meeting because uh, a lot of us will be at the, at the at the contribute. So we'll just cancel the May meeting. We'll resume in June on a on a Wednesday. So, uh, is it gonna be at the same time? Uh, yes, we'll keep the same time to just to make it easy. So. Um, Cool. I think that's it. Let me make sure that I covered everything. Uh, and thank you, Remy, for taking detailed notes. It's making my job easier. But, uh, cool. Uh, any other topics or anything else we need to discuss? No. Thanks, George, for adding that action item. Cool. All right. So I guess that's that's end that that's end it. I'm sorry. That's it then. Uh, so we'll end the meeting about uh, 12 minutes early. Sorry, it's it's a little late at night. I'm getting a little tired, so uh, I can't speak clearly. But uh, all right. Well, thank thanks for joining the call. Uh, and uh, we'll s I'll definitely see some of you in about a month. Uh, if not, we'll see you guys online or uh, another meeting in June. Thanks, Ray. All right. Thanks, Bye everybody. Thank Here. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.